In today's episode, I'm going to show you a few tricks on how to properly assemble your Ender 3 3D printer. Right here on Filament Friday. This video is brought to you by these Patreon supporters. The first thing I recommend is take everything out of the box, lay it out on the table so you can see it, and then you can easily assemble it. You don't want to be pulling stuff out of the box. You may lose something or grab the wrong part. It does come with an illustrated manual. It's really just one sheet with a bunch of decent pictures, but the most important is it gives you a picture of all the parts that you need to assemble it. So you can verify you got everything out of the box and you're ready to build. The first thing you want to look at is the main assembly, which is the bed or the base of your 3D printer. It also has the hot end connected to the electronics, but you want to check the bed to see if it's loose like this one. Now is the best time to adjust this bed before you assemble anything else to it. So we're just going to flip this over like this, get the electronics to the side and pull this back and now we can get access to the two wheels that we need to tighten. If I move this you can see it's really wobbly and these are the two adjustable wheels. They're on eccentric nuts so as we turn those the center will actually offset into the rail. They give you a wrench to fit those. Just put it on and turn it until it's tight. Not too tight, but you'll feel it snug up. And you want to go counterclockwise to do this. And then once those are tight, it slides pretty easy back and forth and no wobble. So we're ready to go to the next step. So we flip the bed back over and the first thing I recommend you do is take this top material off. This is actually your printing bed and it's held on by four clips. Just take those clips off and then you can set all this aside. We're now to step one of the manual so everything I showed you was just suggestions. And they recommend you mount these two uprights but this is where I differ. I say you mount only one upright to start and the one on the electronic side because this is the main upright that the arm will mount to, that the stepper motor will go to, this needs to be perfectly straight. So we're going to use a square to mount this and focus all assembly here. This upright is just a secondary upright, so we're going to set that aside for now. I got the base on the side and this is the arm I want to mount to it. The one with the two holes at the bottom is the arm you want to put on this side of the base. And there's two screws that go on the bottom, they're M545s, you'll find them in your pack of screws and you want to hand tighten them into the aluminum extrusion. Don't use the wrench yet, just hand tighten them and then as they get a little stiffer you can use the wrench to turn them in a little bit further but you want to keep this loose so we can put a square on here and make sure everything is perfectly square as we tighten it up. This is where it's nice to have the tools. I have a big speed square that I've got it clamped to the upright and also to the base. So this way it's 90 degrees perfectly this direction and then as far as the side to side I took one of the aluminum extrusions that came with it and I clamped it to the side so it lines up with the base and the side of this so it should be 90 degrees on this side as well. So now that everything's clamped up I can just tighten those two screws and this upright should be perfect. Next I recommend installing the stepper motor and this requires two M4 screws and you'll find those in a bag and this is totally out of order from the manual, but I recommend you install this, put the two screws in, but don't tighten them up. Just get them to where they're in place, and then this motor isn't going anywhere, but it's loose. And then we're going to install the stop switch. And it's got two T-nuts, and it's got a little lip that stops it from going too far. Line up the T-nuts, slide it down to that lip, and then I recommend tightening the bottom one. So that way you know it tightens up, which it didn't do on this one, so I can loosen it up. And then as you tighten it, it's supposed to twist and go into place. See, now it's holding. And the top one, I can actually see it twist. So I can see if that one there, it just twisted. That one's in place. So these you can tighten up, but we're going to probably loosen those and adjust them in a little bit when we get the gantry level. So I still like to tighten those up. So it's ready to go. The next step is actually step five in the manual where we mount the aluminum extrusion to the bracket that has the extruder motor and the x-axis motor. And there's two screws. You got to access them. It's kind of awkward. You got to stick them in here and screw them into this guy. 
What I recommend you do is you tighten the first one and then the second one you just have it loose because this rod will actually pivot. And it's hard to see it here, but if I mount it where it's going to go, right here, and I can't put it all the way in because the screw is there. But you can see though, just a little movement here produces a big movement over here. And that's really critical because it has to be level to the bed. You'll level the bed, but you want this as perpendicular to this bar as possible. So the easiest way to do that is to, like I said, tighten that first screw and then pivot this so the top of the extrusion is even with the top of this bracket. And then once you have it tight, what you can do is actually check it with a square, put a square on here, and you can't get it all the way up to let it touch, but you can eyeball it to see if it looks level. And if it's actually a little bit high on this side, that's okay because the hot end and there's going to be another bracket that will go on here. So the weight of that will slightly sag it, but it's best to get that as perfectly flat as possible. And then tighten that second screw, which you have to go through this hole. Tighten it up. And then you're ready to go. Once you got this assembled, then we're going to slide it over the bar. And there's an eccentric nut right here on this wheel that we can adjust. And if it's loose or doesn't go on smoothly, you can adjust it with that same wrench you adjusted the bed and just tighten it up. Now, don't be afraid to tighten a little too much because this will wear in a little bit, but it needs to be smooth and not loose. And here's something else that the instructions don't show you. Once you put it all the way down, check the front of your bed, pull it all the way back, and check the front of the bed if it's parallel to this bar. Now, even though we put a square on this and tried to square everything up, this bar can still twist a little bit while you're tightening the screws and you'll see it. Now I'm going to show you here this is an absolute worst case where it's way off. I purposely did that and then here's mine which is nice and square. You see it's lining up with the screws. So if you need to twist this just loosen the screws on the bottom here and then twist it to where it needs to be and tighten those screws and then recheck the squareness just to make sure that didn't get thrown off. We got it moving smoothly, so now I'm going to rest it down on the switch. You can hear it click. And then I'm going to come in here now and I'm going to tighten these screws on the motor. We left them loose before. Now is a good time to tighten them up. And you can eyeball the hole right here where the threaded rod goes, and you should see it lines up with this. But the best way to do it is just put the threaded rod in, and it should naturally just fall into place. If they're lined up, it'll go right in and you're all set. If it doesn't, if it's hitting, then you may have to shim the motor here or loosen this T-nut and it can slide a little bit left and right. But mine's lined up pretty good because it goes right in. So now you want to make sure that the threaded rod is all the way into the coupling and then take the Allen wrench and tighten this screw so the coupling is tight against that threaded rod and now the motor and lift the gantry. Step six, they have you install the belt with the teeth going inside around the motor. And I like to throw these aside. I like to test the carriage. And this is where it's nice to have the threaded rod in place because I can put this at any level. But the assembly here, the hot end assembly, needs to be smooth but not loose. And there is an eccentric nut here that you can adjust to make it tighter or looser. I got mine really nice, no wobble. So this is ready. So now I need to take the belts and the bottom one just hangs but the top one goes inside the channel. And then you want the brass to go down so it goes into the bracket and it goes down so you don't want it rubbing against the metal here. So that one's in place. Now you want to pull this ahead, actually pull it back. This wheel is going to go right over the top of that belt and then once you get it on, then you can pull this and put the other one in its spot. And now we're ready to install the end piece. The end piece has a bearing and two T-nuts similar to the switch that's over here. So this just slides over the belt. And then you put those T-nuts right into the rail. They should pop in place if you had them lined up. 
And then what I like to do is just tighten the back one and make sure the T-nut is spinning and gripping. But don't tighten it all the way so it's gripping. Then take the smaller Allen wrench and just come in here and just pry a little bit just to get a little bit of force on it. So I grab it on both sides and just pull. And then I tighten that first T-nut. Now you want to make sure the belt is tight and also equally spaced on both sides. So you may have to angle this a little bit. So just move the bracket up or down. Just loosen this second one up or down to get that belt tight and also even on both sides. So if this bracket is going upward slightly, don't worry about it. You just don't want the belts rubbing. Now you may be wondering why I didn't follow the manual and I took you through these steps. It's because I want to get you here. This is really the core of your 3D printer. You've got your upright, which is perfectly perpendicular. This arm is perfectly level. It's even with the bed. This is the core of your Ender 3 3D printer. You get this portion right and everything else is just support. This really could be the 3D printer. This is like an Ender 2, which had an articulating arm like this. You could actually almost print with it like this, add the LCD, hook up the electronics, and print away but we will add the other parts but that's why I wanted to assemble it this way so you make sure that these parts are perfectly square now let's finish the rest of the assembly so here's the second upright and this is the bracket that'll go on the cross member now is a good time to check this eccentric nut here is it smooth and you can easily adjust it here make it smooth and not wobbly so I got mine set so now I can install this upright on this step, we're actually going to install three pieces at once. One is the bracket that goes to the cross member. There's two screws, one on the inside, one on the outside. And the one on the inside I tightened and made the bracket flush with the beam, the cross member beam. The outer screw here is still slightly loose. And then I put the upright in place with two bolts. They're loose. And I put a speed square to square it all up, this little bit smaller one than I used before. And you want to make sure that the holes in this upright or on the inside. There's one down here at the bottom and one right here. You want to make sure those are on the inside because that's where the power supply goes. And then you have this up or cross member here and I've got these screws just finger tight into their slots. We'll tighten these up last. So the first thing I'm going to do is tighten this screw once everything looks lined up. Then I'll tighten the two bottom ones and then we'll try the movement of this up and down and finish tightening these top. Now I can move this real smoothly. I don't feel any bumps or resistance other than the threaded rod spinning over here. So I'll leave it right there and then I'll tighten these four screws. This is what I call the silver screw section because you've got two silver screws that go through the upright into the power supply. So the plug goes out, the wires go in and then you have your LCD. The wire connects to connector EXP3. It's keyed, so you can only put it in one way, but it's the third slot. And then there's two more silver screws used to mount to the front here. Before you proceed, you want to check your hot end. If you push down on this white coupling, you should be able to pull the PTFE tube out. Make sure there's no leftover plastic filament in there. And then what you want to do is push this all the way down till you feel it bottom. That means it's hitting the nozzle. You don't want any gap between this and the nozzle. I felt it hit really hard. And then they give you these little blue plastic clips. Put one on there and that should lock it in place. There's also a coupling they give you that screws into the extruder here at the back. Just hand tighten that because you'll take that on and off all the time when you're loading filament. Then take the PTFE tube, stick it in until it goes all the way in. You'll feel it bottom out. And then take a smaller blue clip Put it on that coupling, lock it in place. The wiring is pretty straightforward. You've got this big loom that goes to the hot end. That just clips here onto the extruder. And then you've got a Z connector for the Z motor. That snaps in place here. And then you have this multi-connector cable. It's got an X for the X switch, which is in here. So that goes in there. You might have to use a pliers to reach that. And then there's an X stepper motor that goes under here. And then the E, or extruder, that goes right into this guy right there. The last connection is the power connection here. These two just snap in place. And then I'm going to tie strap that to the base. I also use some tie straps over here. I got one down here at the bottom, one in the middle, and one up top. And brought this all the way up to make sure that it's not 
snagging on anything, and then the bed wiring just stays loose. For the instructions, you mount the spool holder on top with two screws and T-nuts. I like to put it on the side with a 3D print, as you see in some of the machines back here. But to start, just mount it as they have it on top. Now they do give you a small amount of filament, but I suggest you get your own filament spool, put it on there, and then feed it through the extruder. I like to unscrew the PTFE tube. It's easier to slide it through and then slip it on here. That's why I said just hand tighten this. And then once that's hand tightened, then you can push the lever and push the filament to the rest of the way through, all the way to the nozzle. Depending on where you live, you want to make sure you have the right voltage setting. There's a switch here. It sets at 230 if you slide it up, 115 if you slide it down. So in the U.S., where I live, I want to slide that down to 115. So I just use the Allen wrench, push the switch down. If you're outside the U.S., leave it up for 230. There's one more connection I forgot, and that's the Z switch. That's right over here, snaps in place, and now we're ready to power this up. I put the bed material back on with the little clips, lined everything up, plugged it in, and now we're ready to power up, and then we'll go to the prepare menu, and then auto home, and that's gonna move everything and home the hot end, and that'll tell us that the X, Y, and Z motors are all working, and all the switches are working. So I'll power it up, it takes a few seconds. If you don't see the LCD light up, check your connection. It should be on the EXP3, not the 2 or the 1. And then you just click by pushing down on the button, scroll down to prepare, push on the button, click on auto home, and now you can see that it lifted up a little. The X is moving, it's going to hit switch and stop. The bed's moving back, hits it switch and stop. And now it's going to go down, hit the switch on the side, and stop. Now if you want to move it, the, the motors are all powered, so you can shut it off or you can go disable under the prepare menu. But I'm just going to shut it off. After you shut it off, then you can adjust the nozzle so it's just above the adjustment knob. Then take a piece of paper, slide it underneath it, and adjust the knob until the paper just barely rubs against the nozzle. Do that at each adjustment knob and you should be ready to print. Now I have a full video showing how to properly level your bed. I'll link to it at the end of the video. I also have some videos on using the Cure Slicer and some Cure Profiles linked in the description below to help you get started. I've also got some sample prints like my Chep Cube. I hope this helps you get your Ender 3 assembled properly so you have success 3D printing right out of the box.